So first thing I'm going to need to be able to solve this is find these two fellows. That's going to be easy for us. We have the two things we need. We know it's 8 megapascals and 600 degrees Celsius. So steam table here, saturated water. I can go to the temperature table or the pressure table, whatever you find easier. Regardless of what you do, you're going to, oh, we're going to do, you're going to come to the same conclusion. So if we're pressure table here, let's go ahead and go to 8 megapascals. Let's see if we can have that. 8 megapascals, here we are, 8,000 kilopascals, same thing as 8 megapascals. We'll note that the saturated temperature is 295. We are at 600, so therefore we are at superheated state. Right, so does no, does us no good to look at this table? What we really want is the superheated table. So superheated table, I'm looking for 8 megapascals, oops, 8 megapascals. Here we are, 8 megapascals, and I'm looking for 600 Celsius. So this is the row I'm interested in. Out of this row, I'm looking for enthalpy. Enthalpy is this guy here. So I'm looking for 3642.4. That's my enthalpy H1. What is my enthalpy H2? Enthalpy H2 is going to be 300 kilopascals in saturated vapor. So we can go up, back to the saturated table. 300 kilopascals. Here we are, 300 kilopascals. This is the row we're interested in. And out of this row, I'm interested in the saturated vapor enthalpy. Internal energy, enthalpy, saturated vapor energy, enthalpy. I'm gonna look down this one here, and this is the value that I'm interested in. 27.24.9 kilojoules per kilograms. And with those two numbers, I can just subtract the two of them. So um, 3642.4 minus 2724.9, that's going to give me my W1, where I'm going to do this just down here, yes. So work one will be 3642.4 minus the 27, 24.9. Oh, work one is, what did I get? 917.5. Units are the same for both, which are kilograms per, kilojoules per kilogram. So if I'm after the power, what I can do, remember when this is watts, so if I multiply this by the mass flow rate, I'm going to be multiplying by kilograms per second. My kilograms go away. I'm left with kilojoules per second. That is the same thing as a kilowatt, right? So if I do that, I'll be able to find the power that I'm after. So power will be equal to work one times mass flow rate one. That is 917.5 times 13, which gives me 11, 9, 2, 7 point five kilowatts. That's a very big number, so let's do 1, 2, 3. Let's go over there, 1, 2, 3. Let's go over there, get rid of this, convert this into megawatts. This is going to be... Okay, so this is not the answer, but this is part of it, right? This is part of what we need to be able to get there. Next up. So we did this, we did this. Next up, what is W2? Well, if we look at turbine two, it's actually very similar to turbine one, right? We have H2 coming in, and we have work two and enthalpy three coming out. The only thing to remember is that this is only 90% of the mass. So we we'll have to consider the 11.7 the kilograms per second instead of the 13. Okay, but in terms of energy balance, my um, enthalpy 2 has to be equal to my enthalpy 3 plus work output 2. So therefore, if I'm looking for the work output 2, all I need to do is enthalpy 2 minus enthalpy 3. This guy I already have. I already grabbed it off the table. That was a 27, 24. This guy here, I'm still after. It's not hard for us to get, right? We need to grab... Um, things at, what was it, 10 kilopascals. So let's go to the table, 
pressure table this is temperature table not good pressure table 10 kilopascals this is the row i'm interested in right here i know it's 85 percent quality so therefore it's going to be 80 let me get rid of this line 80 5% of this number plus 15% of this number. Right? And that's how that's how I'm gonna find H1. So H1 will be 85% of 2583.9 plus whatever is left, 100 minus 85, which is 15%, times the 191.81. 191.81. So my H1 is 22,225.1, and that is kilojoules per kilograms. Units, I'm always checking the units here. That's how I know the units, right? So now that I have this, I have everything I need to be able to solve the H2. Where is it? Here we are. So this will simply be the 2724.9 minus what we just found um 222 222 5.1 so my w2 is 499.8 499.8 kilojoules per kilograms once again, I want to eliminate this and I want to be left with watts. So I need to multiply by the mass. And this is where, um, you know, we could go wrong because if we multiply by 13, that's not the mass that's going through turbine 2, right? Rather, what's going through turbine 2 is just 90% of that 13. So that's just going to be W2 times mass 90% uh, of mass flow rate 1. In other words, that will be my 400 and... 99.8 times my 11.7 and this turns out to be 58585 five, five kilowatts and I can do anything one two three so this is anything as 5.85 megawatts okay so done 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 last step what is the power of this guy? Two turbines, so the total power I can output is the 11.93 plus the 5.85, right? So to close this off, all I wanna do is, oops, two, two. And this is about 17.8. Same unit, so I can sum them up, no problems there. And that's going to be megawatts. And that's our answer right there. Okay, so no mysteries there. The idea is um, literally rinse and repeat. We did it once for the first turbine. We do it again for the second one. We sum the two up to get what's the total output. Remember that the whole thing is happening because, as we can see from this drawing here, we have a high energy steam going in and then we it's leaving as a lower state of energy steam then but still there's still some energy there that can, we can take advantage of and we are converting that into an even lower state of energy so if we are to do our if we were to do our little diagrams you know the, the ones that we talked about in the video on how to understand the first law better we would have internal energy here so our state one would be over here we would have our state two over here and our state two, three would be even lower, right? So as we go from here to here, there's only one thing that can happen. Either we're losing heat or not losing, sorry, we're outputting heat or we're outputting um, work. Same thing here. Either we're outputting heat or we're out, outputting work, right? Um, we know this is not the case. Well, actually, let's talk about all the possibilities for a second. We can be um, outputting heat and then work can be going in or out, right? So if there's work going in, but out, 
heat is being outputted sufficiently, we can have both situations. But in reality, we don't have any heat going in or out whatsoever, right? We know that from the start. So that means that the only possibility here is for work to be outputted over here. Same thing here, there's no heat whatsoever, so we don't have any chance of work being inputted with enough heat being released. We need to have work being outputted on both situations. So that's how we know um, to do the energy balance properly. All right, I hope this helped you out. If it did, consider liking the video. If you have any questions, as per usual, just leave them down below, and we'll talk soon.